In the first few videos in this series, I talked about the basic anatomy and a useful mnemonic to help you with reading x-rays. In the upcoming videos, we'll go into more detail of each letter in this mnemonic, starting with the letter A, which stands for assessment of quality. Here's an ideal x-ray, and here's an x-ray of poor quality. These are obviously not the same patients, but you can tell that the one to the right is a little more difficult to read. The patient is rotated, there are cables in the field, there's poor inspiration, so on and so forth. So before trying to interpret the film, first determine if the x-ray you're looking at is of good enough quality. The last thing you want to do is to make a conclusion on some bad data. The first thing you want to do when assessing the quality of an x-ray is recognizing what type of chest x-ray you're looking at. Make note of how and in what position the chest x-ray was shot in, and of course make sure you're looking at the correct patient. There are three types of chest x-ray films, anterior-posterior, posterior-anterior, and lateral x-rays. As you can see here, lateral x-rays are easy to tell apart from AP and PA x-rays. This one is obviously shot from the side, while the other ones are shot perpendicular to the patient, either facing or looking away from the x-ray machine. Knowing this, and making a mental note if the chest x-ray was shot from behind or in front is helpful when making assessments later on. In general, the posterior-anterior view is superior in quality to the anterior-posterior view. If you can safely obtain a posterior-anterior film on your patient, this would be preferred. That's because posterior-anterior x-rays are usually obtained on ambulatory patients who are able to position themselves, therefore giving the x-ray technician more flexibility. When these films are shot, the patient's back is facing the x-ray machine and the x-ray detector in front, and so x-rays come from behind, pass through the patient from the back to the front and onto the x-ray detector. And again, this extra space and flexibility in a posterior anterior film allows the x-ray technician more freedom and mobility to position the patient as needed without any external distractions. To illustrate why this is important, take for example a very sick patient in the ICU. These patients don't have the ability to walk or stand, and so they stay in bed and a portable machine is brought to them. The x-ray detector is slipped behind their back and the x-ray machine is placed in front. Often, these anterior-posterior films are inferior in quality to that of the posterior-anterior view. That's because patients who are bedbound are often limited in their space and mobility to move. Also, there are usually things in the way such as central lines, IV poles, monitors, blankets, etc. In a portable x-ray, it is more difficult to position the patient who may be hunched over in bed and so important aspects of x-ray quality, such as position, rotation, may be difficult to obtain versus an ambulatory patient who is able to freely stand up without many distracting elements surrounding them. All of these make it more difficult to maneuver the patient and overall gives the x-ray technician a potentially limited study. The last reason I'll mention for why it's important to know what type of film you're looking at is if a film is shot anterior-posterior, things in the body that are more anterior, such as the heart, may appear larger compared to the same film shot posterior anterior. If you think of the x-ray as casting a shadow, this will make more sense. The place you choose to shoot the x-ray is like a light source, and the x-ray will then capture the shadow on the film. In this diagram, if you're shooting a film from front to back, the film that is captured will have a larger shadow of the cardiac silhouette, because the heart sits more anterior in the body. If you shoot a posterior anterior film, the cardiac silhouette will appear smaller, because of the position of the film was shot compared to the location of the structure, in this case the heart. Therefore, heart size is most accurate when assessed on a PA film. This is important when knowing the size of the heart is essential, such as in the case of a pericardial effusion or other cases of cardiomegaly you may see on chest x-ray. In summary, we talked about the three different views you could obtain when getting a chest x-ray. There's the posterior anterior view, which often is obtained alongside a lateral view, given the increased amount of mobility that ambulatory patients have. The PA and lateral view are preferred if you could obtain it in your patient. If not, the alternative would be an anterior posterior chest x-ray. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to this channel to get updates on when we release our latest videos. And don't forget to follow Med School on social media. If you're feeling real generous, visit our Patreon page and make a pledge to help us create more awesome videos.